Oh gosh, let's pop off. My boy Ivy. I told y'all gonna tell you a story about a bull rider. Well, it's not me. Uh, you know, Ivy. <laughs> Ivy, Ivy, Ivy. Country kids grow up different than city kids. I don't know if you noticed that or not. Come on, I try to tell a story. Try to tell me. <laughs> I love you too, I I do love you, buddy. But they they grow up different. City kids. You know they live in a city. <laughs> they live I try to tell a story. They live in the city. They got their little friends on the same street. There's nothing wrong with that. You know? Uh, country kids, you know, man, I had no kids on the, for a mile or two, you know, other kids to play with. City kids just go to the pool, city pool, crystal clear water, high dive, low dive, and all that, chlorinated water, clean. Country kids, we use ponds and rivers, make room for, you know, kind of, Stay clear of the snakes. <laughs> Water's a little muddy. City kids have chores, I'm sure, you know, uh, take the trash out, make, clean their room, mow the yard, maybe. Well, country kids do the same style. But they also have chores out around the barn, you know, what well, y'all call it mucking the stalls and stuff. I can just call it cleaning them out. Shoveling poop. <laughs> you know, working in the garden. Working in the fields. You know, the kind of stuff we did. City kids go to the park and uh, ride on the merry-go-round, the swings and stuff, the slides. Got your kids play in the woods. Have a rope hanging out of a tree, maybe, or a tree house, or maybe a pine straw hut, fort, so to speak. Climb up pine sapling trees and ride them over. You know, I mean, they straighten back up in time. Got kind of things we did. But uh, my brother and I, and y'all met him, Uncle Riley. I call him RJ. So when I refer to RJ, you know I'm talking about Uncle Riley. His name is Riley Jerome Morrow. Named after my dad and my grandpa. My grandpa was Riley Samuels, and my dad was Emory Jerome Morrow. I wasn't so fortunate. I got named after my uncle who stayed in trouble all the time. Uncle, uncle Eugene. <laughs> Anyway, uh, my brother and I, with dad, dad be at work, you know, we had no close neighbors. Uh, we'd look for something to do, have fun. And he's four years older than me. But uh, my dad be at work, and my mom, one day a week, go help my grandmother do her wash, the wash day. And then she did, she washed the old fashioned way. We'll talk about that one day. And, and didn't want to change. So my mom would go spend almost all day helping her do their wash, once a week. So we'd go out and gather up all the calves, bring them into the lot. We'd put them in the, in the loading chute. And uh, he'd get on one, I'd open the gate, that calf come running out, you're about five, six hundred pound calf. Then throw him off. Then it was my turn. I'd get on the next one, hit open the gate, and I'd come running out on there and get thrown off of the ground. <laughs> Wonder we didn't get hurt, but we never did. But you know, that planted a seed. That planted a seed with my brother. It did. He, uh, Ivy, you cannot go in my office. No, sir. Ivy. Ivy thinks he owns this place. He may. Oh Lord, I should have said that. I shouldn't have said nothing. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said nothing, I.
That's a carrot. That no way make it's a carrot. Come on, Mama Cat. Anyway, they planted a seed in my brother's mind, you know, that one day he wanted to graduate up from those calves, maybe come a bull rider. Well, to me, it's just a game. Yeah, we can play the game, but I think to him, it's like practice, practice time. But we grew up, and uh, we had his friend. He's a cattle buyer, and he owned a sale barn, and he bought cattle all over the county uh, from everybody, and he paid good prices, always fair, and then he'd resell those animals in his sale barn and make a little profit. That's how he made a living. His name was Mark Pante, big Cherokee Indian, full blood. And he was the nicest guy you'd ever meet in your life. And his wife was named Cecilia. Well, my mom and dad were good friends with Mark. And so we visited their house a lot, and they would be visited our house a lot. Mark, as a young man, had been a bull rider, professional. And he had these action pictures. Ivan, don't go over. And these action pictures on the walls. You know how you see these action pictures where you're kind of in halfway and you're in the air, or like football players coming through the line, you know, with that ball and tackles being made, but there's all of a sudden they're an action picture. You know, a steel shot. Or a basketball player, you know, making that dunk. <laughs> But well, he had pictures on the walls of him riding bulls. And some of them hit be up in the air, or the bull be up in the air, or they'd be on the ground, the bull left right behind him chasing him. Just all kinds of crazy pictures, but he's a bull rider. So that just kind of fertilized that little seed that had been planted in my brother's mind all them years. And it began to grow. And he was always asking Monk about bull riding. Is it hard? Is it fun? Is it dangerous? Yes, yes to all of them. It's fun, it's hard, but it's dangerous. He kept on, he kept on, he kept on. One day, he was a senior in high school, and I was a freshman, four years behind him, and we was over helping Mark blow some cash. Uh, we worked for him part time. And uh, he started in about bull riding. Buck said, look here, Riley, call him Riley. He said, Riley, look, there's a youth rodeo in Dayton next week. If you want to really ride a bull, you get your mom's permission, your dad. I'll meet you there, and I'll show you all I know about riding bulls. Well, my brother said, I don't want to ride a, a youth bull. I want to ride a real bull. He said, oh, they're real. They're real bulls. They're real rodeo bulls. They call it a youth rodeo, so professionals can't come and compete. That made sense. So my brother went over there, and I'm thinking, yeah, well, this, this is as far as this old dream's gonna go. He ain't gonna do this, but he did. He went over and signed up. And it was on a Friday night, the night that he was supposed to ride. Well, he told me what he's gonna do. That, Mom and Dad didn't know. And he told Monk what day he'd go ride. Monk was going to meet him there and bring all his old rigging he used to use. All he had to do was be there. <laughs> well, we got dressed in our western gear, our cowboy hats, and our cowboy boots, and our big buckles, you know, and we come downstairs. And Mom said, oh, y'all going out together tonight? Yes, ma'am, we just going to go to town. We didn't say what town. We got in the car, we took off to Dayton, Texas. We got there and my brother went in and when he got ready to draw the draw the bulls and he draw the bull, a number of a bull. Name I forget the name of the bull. And so Monk and my brother and I went back in the back to see what bull he drawn. As fate or luck, whatever you'll call it would have it, my brother drawed the biggest, the meanest bull in the place. <laughs> Big old 
almost full of Brahma, but he had something else in him. He had a real dark bull, had kind of a whitish face. But his old horns look like this, this big round where they come out of his head. He had huge horns. Not long like Tex, but huge. But they went almost back. And uh, about 18 inches long or so, you know. And they'd cut the ends of them off. So they're blunt. They were that big around where they cut the ends of them off. And uh, Mark studied that bull. He knew bulls. He studied him. That bull would see us. He'd come and he'd hit that wall. Hit that wall. Pointed. Oh, he'd paw in the dirt. Oh, boogers and slobbers coming out of his mouth. He's slinging that stuff. He was mad. Mark told my brother, he said, look here, Riley. He says, that bull's dangerous. If you're not careful, that bull will hurt you. He may kill you right here tonight. So I want you to be aware of what you're fixing to do. Oh, but my brother, you know what? I thought he was crazy. But he was, he was very, very brave. Seriously. Uh, never take that away from him. He was determined to try to ride that bull. Well, the time come, they brought that bull down that chute. I climbed up on the fence there with him and looking down at that bull, it looked like a truck sat there inside that chute. And his old skin was just shake like that, quiver. And he was slinging his old head, slobbering everything and pawing the ground. They got that rigging around him. It's time for my brother to get on him. I'm thinking we should have called in sick. <laughs> we should have called in sick on this. My brother sat down on top of that bull and immediately that bull started raking them horns back. And Mark said, stay away from them horns. He says, when you come out of there, you better be leaning back and don't ever let yourself come forward. He said, he'll get you with them horns. He knows his horns go back and he'll hurt you. Mark helped him wrap his hand, get his hand all wrapped tight. He said, now look, so when you come off that bull, you've got to come off clean. You've got to hit the ground running, no matter how much you hurt. Unless you're dead or knocked out, he said, you better come up running, because that bull's going to make a U-turn. He's coming back for you. <laughs> and he did, too. I did not going to hear a story or not. You want to hear a story of it? Fact. Fact. Go on over Karen's coming now. She'll, she'll hear it. Karen. Karen, come here. You want to hear a story? You want to hear a story, Karen? Oh, you got an itch? Fine. I can't get rid of her. I can't get rid of that kid. She's into everything. Anyway, back to the story. <laughs> back to the story. My brother got set down on him. Mark told him everything he could tell him. He says, you come off, you gotta hit the ground and run in, the bull will come back. He said, do not, he said, I'm tell I can't tell you enough, do not lean forward. He said, that bull hit you in the face and horns, you're done. You're done. In my mind, I'm up on that fence looking down at it. And I'm thinking, what am I gonna tell my mom and dad when I go home without this guy? <laughs> what, what am I gonna say? You know where I hung on that bull's horn, mom? I couldn't get him over that horn? Or he's flat as a pancake? That was my fear. What am I gonna say? When he was all settled down on that bull, that old skin still shivering like that, that bull jerking and jerking, throwing that head back. My brother leaned back far as he could lean. Monk nodded his head, that guy opened that gate. Folks, that bull exploded. 2,500 pounds of just solid muscle exploded out of that gate. It looked like he went treetop high. And when he come down, he made a spin, started kicking and bucking, and my brother come off. 
I don't know how many seconds he is on there. You know, the clock is a, to win or to ride uses eight seconds. People don't realize how long eight seconds are until you're sitting on top of a 2,500 pound bull. I'm shaking my head thinking we should have called in sick. I'm telling you. We, but my brother come off there. He hit the ground. He got up and he's running. And Monk said exactly what that bull did. That bull made it. So the minute that bull knew he was off, he turned around. And here he comes. And this is where the clowns come in. And I'm going to tell you what. Clowns are the most valuable player in a rodeo. They're probably the least paid. These two clowns crossed just like that fried bull. That bull didn't know which way to go. It confused him. My brother had enough time to get to the fence. Up on the fence it went. That was one mean bull. The good thing out of that, well, several good things happened. Number one, my brother wasn't hurt. Not at all. Wasn't hurt at all. Number two, and the most important, he decided he didn't want to be a bull rider. <laughs> that was his best thing. Because we was talking to Muck later, it comes up, you know, why when did, why did you quit riding bulls? Well, when you get stepped on or you get broken shoulders, broken ribs, broken legs, broken arms, it's time to quit. My brother didn't have to go that far before he learned. Let's not do this no more. <laughs> but he rode a bull. And that was his life's ambition, I believe, is to ride a bull. And he did it. Not, not the full eight seconds. don't matter. The courage it took to sit down on top of that monster and come out of that chute with him. Courage. That's courage. All right, folks, that's my story about the bull rider in his family. Not me. I was a sporter of the two. <laughs> I'd have called in sick. <laughs> okay. I got my boys and my girls out here with me, and I got to cut loose here and go round them up. I was already on the front porch, and Karen is checking out Gigi's car, and I can't have that. <laughs> you guys have a great day, and I hope you enjoy this. So, if you can see her over there, she's mad. Yep, she's walking off. I was over by the porch. Our girl Heidi, I didn't talk to her to sleep. <laughs> and got old mama cat down here listening. She's the only one still awake. You guys have a great day and I love you. Take care.